The reserves have a huge piece in the national defense puzzle, and rallying the Rockies is a great way for us to develop tactics, techniques, and procedures in parallel to the active duty. Because if ever there's a fight, a high-end fight that we're going to have, we're going to go do it together. From other exercises, really, is that it's going to be more geared towards a near peer enemy uh, fight, which means we're going to have a lot more advanced kinetics and non kinetics that can interfere with air operations. Moving forward in the battlefield for the, you know towards the future, uh, our airmen really are going to have to learn to fight and uh, fly in these types of environments. So if we get the training stateside as more realistic as possible, it would be a better bid for success when we actually have to go and do these operations. We're trying to also incorporate new things that the Air Force is pushing, such as the multi capable airmen concept and actually test that to see that if that's a capable and viable thing going forward for the Air Force to utilize in uh, conducting operations. We're good at tactical airlift, but I think it's going to take something more in the next fight where we're going to need to be uh, multi-capable airmen. We're going to need to be able to do some things out of our job jar. It's not just stuck doing, say, one job. However, um, in a, an environment where they're possibly pushed forward to uh, like forward operating bases, they're capable of maybe being able to load the aircraft and also provide fuel for the aircraft. This is really good for the expeditionary style the Air Force is trying to reach and obtain to because uh, the faster we're able to move throughout the area of operations, the faster we can bid for success and outpace the enemy uh, wherever we're, we're forward deployed to. So this is a really amazing way that we can spend our training dollars and come together with units that we don't spend a lot of time with. We're going to refuel some A-10s and get them to do an integrated combat turn. They're going to they're gonna go do their mission. They're going to come back and get some gas from our C-130s, and then they're going to be back out on their way. Aircraft are most likely going to be interfered with non-kinetically, such as jamming and communications inter interruptions, rather than seeing those kinetic effects. And we're really pushing that kind of training so that when airmen see this in the real world, they're not going to be surprised or um, pretty much be degraded in that fight going forward. It's really a tactical exercise, but the strategic impacts are going to be uh, significant from Rally in the Rockies. There's some really unique capabilities that we have here. We've received help from not only the aerial port squadron all the way through really the whole team and i've seen our our jag corps step up what we're doing in rally in the rockies could not be possible without our mission partners in the 19th airlift wing because it is a mutually beneficial relationship where they can tap into all of our talent and all of our experience that we carry here which is vast and deep and we really couldn't do this without them but I would really like to mention by name Nick Hainsfurther, who has basically taken the lead on this exercise. Chris Axe uh, has brought his expertise from Rally in the Valley last year. Major Freeman has done, uh, in conjunction with Nick Moore, has created a, a scenario that's so realistic and is going to be so useful. So the team has stepped up and delivered in so many ways and I couldn't be prouder to be a part of this unit and what this unit does on a daily basis and the miracles it makes happen uh, day to day. It's really powerful and it's really a testament to what the reserves can bring to the warfighting capability of the country.